Good evening gamers. Thank you for checking out my gear progression guide. Uh, this is by popular demand. I was actually getting some comments on YouTube and from my clan chat asking me about what gear they should prioritize for the new Tombs of a Masket. So here I am to provide a little bit of insight in what type of upgrades you should be looking for and aiming for while you progress through the tombs. Just a little caveat before we begin here, I am filming this guide on September 5th, 2022. If there's been any significant updates since this date, this will likely be outdated. As metas further develop, this might become outdated as well. Uh, only time can really tell. This goal for this video is to provide a decent framework, especially for newer players, to decide which gear they should prioritize as they progress through the tombs of a mascot. To decide what we should be prioritizing, we have to take a look at the bosses within the tombs. You have Zabek, which you range with a long range range weapon. Kefri, you melee with stab. Baba, you also melee with stab. Akka is a melee heavy room, uh, you don't need stab, scythe works super well here, um, but once again it is melee heavy. And then the wardens at the end, you do use all attack styles, but it is definitely range heavy as uh, the entire final phase is range, and you also use range during the second phase. With that out of the way, we should be focusing first on melee DPS, range DPS, and finally magic DPS. The best defense is more DPS in this and pretty much every other encounter that I can think of in RuneScape. The reasoning behind this is that the faster you kill the boss, the longer, or I guess the shorter it is alive, and that means it is less time for it to do damage to you and less time for you to make mistakes and uh, take damage. A lot of the Tombs of a Masket is avoidable damage, uh, pretty much completely unless you turn on the invocations where they can hit through prayers. So uh, shorter encounters will lead to less chances for you to make mistakes. Since melee is used the most, I'm gonna start off with our melee gear progression. Uh, the gear setup on the left uh, with the bandos, serp helm, abyssal dagger, and dragon dagger is what we're gonna be starting with. If you can't afford uh, bandos yet, you can drop this down to barrows uh, with a, uh, what's it called, a fighter's torso, or honestly, pretty much anything else, but yeah, like Toreg's legs and a fighter torso would probably be your best bet um, if you can't afford bandos yet. If you can't afford bandos yet, I would actually prioritize getting the next slot here, the Zamoraki and Hasta upgrade before getting bandos, and hell, uh, honestly, you'd probably be better off going to the next one, Rapier, and then the next one, the Fang of Osmotan. Um, definitely not saying that right. But uh, yeah, definitely getting the Fang before upgrading to Bandos. The reason for this is, as discussed before, is that the best defense is better offense. So uh, if you don't already have Bandos, I would definitely do this upgrade progression to the Fang before um, getting your Bandos armor. Um, before moving on to the Claws, uh, at this point, this is where I would switch over to range DPS to uh, upgrade your DPS further. But uh, if we are just following our melee gear progression after getting the Fang, you should move on to Claws for a spec web. It's really nice for uh, a lot of the rooms, especially skipping a large portion of Akka's final phase with all the white orbs that fly around that you smack into. And then uh, after that, you can get rid of your Serp Helm, get a face guard, bring a Sanfu Serum in case you do get poisoned. You're only really going to get poisoned in Kefri and Venomed in the other rooms if you make mistakes. So ideally, you don't make any mistakes, but it's always good to bring a Sanfu for a little bit of a backup if you're camping the Serp Helm. Or not the Serp Helm, the, uh, the face guard here. And finally, and this is probably your last upgrade in the entirety of this video that you should make is getting up to the full Torva. It does increase your DPS with melee, um, albeit not as much as uh, any of the other upgrades in this. So this is definitely the last one you should go for. It's extremely expensive. So that's why I chose it to be last on this list. Next, moving on to the range progression. Uh, as far as the first switch over from uh, the left hand, the basic setup we got with the Blessed Dehyde, ACB, and the Blowpipe moving into Armadil. Um, Armadil should definitely be after uh, your melee DPS, and the Armadil is only there until you can afford the full crystal and the Bofa setup. The second you can sell all your Armadil and move to this, 
you definitely should. A little thing that I did want to mention is the uh, graphics that I was stealing off the wiki to make this uh, included the helm. I would just camp the melee helm that we had discussed before. It's pretty easy to camp the Serp helm for a majority of this, the majority of this before you move on to the face guard and eventually the Torva helm. So definitely don't need to be buying or running in there with a coif switch or an armadillo helmet switch. That's fairly ridiculous. I do think if you are using the full crystal, um, the extra percentage damage bonus, damage and accuracy bonus with the helm is worthwhile. So I would uh, recommend you bringing the crystal helm or even just camping the crystal helm once you are able to afford the Bofa and uh, crystal. Bofa absolutely rips in this and it's very useful for one-shotting the boulders in the Baba room. Um, if you don't have the uh, crystal and the bow, you have to use the blowpipe and in teams, uh, one hit will not do it. But uh, at least in small scale teams that I've done, the Bofa can just one hit it, which allows you to run through, hit the boss and end the boulder phase quickly. Uh, next up on the list, and it is a huge jump, uh, about a billion gold jump, is the Twisted Bow. Twisted Bow is fantastic at Zabak, it's fantastic at the Guardians, it makes the final phase super free at the Guardians, and uh, this is probably the most important upgrade in this raid, and um, probably just in RuneScape in general. This bow is worth selling your entire bank for, and uh, Honestly, uh, I you could scrap all of the melee upgrades and just buy the bow, and that is what I would recommend doing. So just uh, get the T-Bow as quick as humanly possible. And last on the list is the Masori armor. It is well over a billion GP for the Masori right now, so that is going to be last on the list. But, but it is the first range armor that does give you a range damage boost, so this is definitely very worthwhile. Last on the list, we got our mage gear. Despite what we were all thinking before the raid was released, uh, magic is not used very much during this raid. Uh, we're just going to be starting off with mystics and a toxic trident on the left. If uh, you just have a normal trident, first on your upgrade list would be the toxic trident. I do think uh, it would make sense to move to an occult next. If you already have the toxic trident, you probably already have the occult. Occult is a massive upgrade for the uh, small price that it costs. Uh, so that should be one of the first, if not the first thing on the list entirely, just due to how cheap it is. Next, I would get the Tormented Bracelet. It gives you a percent magic damage modifier, which is fantastic. Um, moving on past that, you got your Arams for a little bit more accuracy. Moving on to the Ancestral set, which is a massive jump in price from the Aram set, but not only does this give you accuracy, it does give you a percentage damage modifier as well, uh, which is great for any and all charged staffs. After this, uh, you can move on to the Sanguinesti staff. It's, uh, it is better than the Trident. You get a max hit, it's a little bit more accurate, and uh, it, with that it comes with almost three times the cost, using three blood runes per cast. And after that, we move on to the new uh, Tumakin staff from the raid. Extremely expensive, 1.8 billion GP as, uh, as of right now. Um, when I am filming this. It is pretty good, uh, not really that useful in the raid. You use it during uh, the Akka melee phases and then you get to use it on the Obelisk during P2 of the Wardens. You also use it during the Mage phase of P2 of the Wardens, which is nice, but overall, as far as completing the raid goes, this isn't going to be as big of an upgrade as it would be to upgrade your melee or range, so that's why I do have this as last on the list. I would put this before Torva and Masori, though, as it does, uh, it is going to give you more DPS than those two sets, especially for the GP since they are all over a billion at the time. And there you have it. That's what I think is the ideal gear progression for TOA as of early September. Uh, this is subject to change. And uh, just a quick recap on everything. You should be looking to prioritize your DPS uh, in the order of melee, then range, then magic. I do think overall it would be worth selling everything to get a twisted bow uh, i'd be better to run in there with dehydes a twisted bow a regular trident and like an abbey dagger than it would be to uh you know prioritize some of the other upgrades over that the damage on the twisted bow is just so good that it does make it worthwhile to do that um other than that uh the osmonton's fang is just so good the accuracy is out of control so uh if you can i would get that 
um, as soon as possible. And then ultimately, as I said, sell it for the Tebow and then buy that one back as soon as you can because it just is insanely accurate. It hits almost every time. It feels like you never miss. So that one is a very worthwhile upgrade. I know it is about 400 mil or so. I think it has dropped to like 350 today, but that would be great. Um, after that, you can get the cheap little upgrades like the Occult and the Tormented Bracelet, which are, uh, they provide a good amount of DPS for what they cost. And that is another good way to focus on this, ultimately ending with the defensive items as your last upgrades. Thank you very much for watching. I would appreciate a subscription if I did help you at all. If you do disagree with me, which I'm guessing a large amount of you would or will, please uh, let me know in the comments below what you would prioritize first and where I went wrong in the making of this guide.